new videos every day. Psyche Truth. Life. Wisdom. Hi, I'm Catherine. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to do a trim thighs workout. Uh, this workout is something that I've specifically designed to give you strong, thin legs uh, that look beautiful and lean uh, without building any excess bulk. I know a lot of you are concerned that if you do any kind of strength training with your legs that you're just going to get, you know, big thick thighs instead of that long slender look that we all want. Uh, so just stay tuned, favorite this video, and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to do a brief overview of the muscles that we're going to be working today. Uh, for our purposes, we can divide the thigh muscles into four groups. The first being the quadriceps, which are these large muscles in the front of your leg. The second being the hamstrings, these are the muscles in the back of your leg. And then we have the adductors and the abductors. The adductors are the muscles on your inner thighs that are in charge of bringing your leg in to the midline. The abductors are the muscles on the outside of your thigh and these are the ones that bring your leg away from the midline of your body. And the little way that I remember the difference between abductors and adductors is um, I think of an alien, a UFO coming to somebody's house and abducting them, taking them away from their home. And in the same way, your abductor muscles take away your leg from the, from the midline of your body. So we are gonna start with those quadriceps muscles. These are the ones people are most familiar with, but they're also the ones that tend to show bulk the most because they tend to be overused. So we're going to start with some side squats. We do want to work them out, but we don't want to overuse them. So we're just warming up our muscles. Now when we step out to the side, even though this is a leg workout, we want to imagine pulling our navel, our belly button, towards our spine to keep our spine safe and to keep our core strong. Now you want the toes facing directly out in front of you. Try to go a little bit lower each time. You might feel a little bit of a stretch on your inner thighs. I find that it helps if you put some of your weight into your rear, almost like you're trying to sit in a chair. Put your weight a little bit farther behind you than maybe you think you should. We're just going to do a few more of these. You might notice I have uh, my hands up in front of my chest. This is just to remind me to keep my shoulders back and not hunch over too much. Let's just do one more to the left and take a little break. Now we're gonna do the same thing, same idea, but now we're gonna take it to the front and the back. So I'll turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. We're just gonna take a nice wide step forward with our right foot. And you want it to be a wide step because you want there to be room for your knee to bend safely. So we take a nice wide step forward. And when you bend down, you don't want your left leg, you don't want your back leg to actually touch the floor. You just kind of want it to hover. Ideally, both legs should be in about 90 degree angles. After you step, you don't have to hold it that long. Push it all the way back and uh, meet, your, meet your back foot with your front foot. Now take care not to go too far over your foot with that front leg. So if you take too small of a step, you might find that your knee goes far over your toes. And we don't want that because that puts a lot of strain on our joints, especially our knee. So you wanna take the nice wide step, plant your foot there. You might take some adjusting and some getting used to to see exactly how far out you have to step. Just try to land with your knee right over your ankle before pushing up. So let's do that a few times on each leg. Let's start with our left this time since we've given the right one a bit of a workout already. Nice wide step and push. Now you can put your hands on your hips and feel free to go very slow with these because as you can see, especially when you first start doing them, it's actually kind of a balance challenge as well. So we're working all of these stabilizers in our thighs, as well as stabilizers in our hips. And if you're someone with bad knees or wobbly knees, this is a great exercise for uh, giving you that stabilization that you need. So just a little more 
here. Socks are a little slippery. So I'm taking these really slowly. So the nice thing is that in this exercise, on the way down, you'll feel the burn here in, your, in the top of your thigh, but when you push off, you'll feel a little bit of a burn in, the, in your hamstrings as well. So let's just do two more on each side. Push. Push. Right leg. And left leg. Okay. And now we're gonna take that same idea, but now we're gonna do a little bit more interesting of a movement. So we're going to do a side lunge, but instead of bending both of our legs, we're only gonna bend one. So we start with the toes facing forward, step out to the side. Again, I'm placing my hands here so my shoulders don't crunch over. Chest is nice and tall. Step out to the side, bend that knee, but keep your derriere. You actually want it to stick out this time. So we do our side lunge. The feet stay in one line, and when we bend, our butt's actually coming out behind us like this. And to meet our feet, we just pull that long leg in. So now you can do it to the other side. We keep our feet in line, toes pointed forward. Step out, strong stomach, butt out, and pull it in. So we are gonna do a few of these until we feel those adductor muscles working. That's the muscle that's pulling our leg in. And that's one of those, it's, it's kind of hard to get to if you don't know the right exercises. So this is why I'm sharing this with you today. Hopefully you'll get a, a burn in those inner thighs. So let's just do two to the right, two to the left a few times until we start to feel a little bit of a burn. So we go right, right, left, and left. Now you want to resist the urge to twist to uh, whichever angle you're going to. You might feel like you wanna open up to the right. But it's really important that you keep those toes forward and let your inner thigh do the work in. Now if this feels too easy or too slow for you, feel free to watch the video twice. Just pick up the pace, do whatever your body needs. Right. Let's just do one more to the left. Good, so now we know what that feels like to work our inner thighs. Let's get acquainted with what it's like to use our outer thighs. So we're working those abductors, those alien UFO muscles. So we're gonna just start in parallel, toes facing forward. Slide your right foot out, toe pointed. Think of putting your heel towards the sky. So not like this, but almost, almost pigeon-toed. So that if you were to bring it in, it would almost be facing in. And just lift from that outer thigh. You might feel it immediately. You might also feel it a little bit in your, in your hip and your buttock. So just lift and tap lift and tap. Uh, it might be a challenge at first to isolate that muscle. You might find that you want to tip over a little bit. It's perfectly okay. It's kind of awkward at first, but this will give you really nice toned outer thighs, which can be a hard place to target. Just lift and tap. And you notice my toes are pointed. My leg stays completely straight. This lets those muscles elongate while I'm using them. So another, it's another way to resist that extra bulk is by elongating that muscle while it's being used. Okay, just a couple more here. And we'll try it on the other side. 
Now you might notice that your left leg is already burning. Also totally normal. Those are your uh, hip stabilizers working to keep your leg straight. That's, that's what's keeping you from toppling over sideways when you lift that right leg. So if you're feeling that left glute burning, those hip muscles burning, you're probably doing it right. So let's try it on the left side. So we lift and lower. Again, if we were to bring our toe in, it would almost be facing. No, it's like a pigeon toe, really. So we lift here, the straight leg, pointed toe. Lift and lower. And throughout this exercise, always remember to pull up through your abdomen, pull that belly button in towards the spine. And if you have access to a mirror, check your form and make sure for this one, you don't want your butt to stick out too much. So there might be a tendency to kind of be doing this sort of thing. But if you can, try to tuck your pelvis under and really isolate those leg muscles. So I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is make it so that the leg is the only thing moving. My upper body stays stable. My standing leg stays stable. And my pelvis is as neutral as I can make it. Okay, so that concludes our standing series. Now let's take it to the floor and work more on those four muscle groups. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our hamstring muscles. These are the ones along the back of our thighs. So the position we're going to start with, we're gonna be on all fours. The legs are gonna be about hip, hip width distance apart. Knees on the ground, elbows on the ground. Try to keep your shoulders away from your ears. Pull them back, feel your upper back nice and strong. Same idea with the abs, pull up your, your navel towards your spine, that'll help secure your core and it'll help stabilize your legs as we work them. So we're gonna start with some leg lifts to the back. You wanna feel, just wanna get a feel for those hamstring muscles in our right leg. So you should feel like you're pushing up through your heel, and then we can return it to the ground. So push up and return. We just want to get a sense of what it feels like to move solely from the hip socket, where we shouldn't be opening up our pelvis this way. There shouldn't be any swinging of the hips. We're merely extending our legs to the back using our hamstring muscles. So let's just do let's just do it all on one side for now. Let's do about 10 just to see how that feels to keep a contraction in the hamstrings. So lift and lower. And you might get the urge like I said to open that hip or to arch your back. But really try to keep your core stabilized as you do these leg lifts. Now in a second, after we do the left side, we're gonna extend the leg and that's gonna be a totally different feeling. Let's just do two more on the right. And start on the left. So you drive that left heel up and you almost wanna think that as your heel reaches the sky, that hip of the leg that's working goes towards the floor. So heel reaches the sky, I'm driving my left hip. I'm thinking of trying to get it back to the mat. And that's creating a nice stretch on the top of that left quadricep, that left hip flexor. Let's just do two more on the left. Driving that heel up. Resisting any urge to twist or to arch that back. Good. You can take a quick shake break if you feel any tension starting to build up in your neck and your shoulders. Just relax, wiggle it out, and then we can reset for that extended leg series. And as far as your arms go, 
Some people like to clasp their hands like this. Uh, if you're someone like me that struggles with shoulder tension, I find that sometimes doing more of like a sphinx pose can uh, help keep the upper back wide. So I'm gonna do that for the extended leg series. So basically elbows and hands are parallel to each other. The knees are in that same position about hip width distance apart. I'm gonna press down through the mat with my arms. And this time I'm going to extend the leg. So I'm starting with a pointed toe, but again, I'm not letting my hip drop. I'm not opening and I'm not letting it drop. I'm using my abs to stabilize my pelvis and keep it nice and center and neutral. So from here, this might already feel like a challenge just staying, you know, aligned in this position, but we're gonna lift our legs up, keeping the legs straight. Now this might feel, for lack of a better word, awkward at first. Sometimes it's hard to, to feel like this is really doing anything. It feels like we should have to do a lot more work and we should go way higher, but we actually wanna keep the movement small here. Think of just lifting a few inches. It's more important that we keep a nice, correct form than it is to get the leg high. So that might be just a couple inches off the ground. It might be a little higher, but the most important thing is that you're working correctly. And you should start to feel this right below your right bum. You should feel it really high up on that thigh muscle in the back. Now something else to keep in mind is to not let this left hip sink in either. You don't want that left hip to go off to the side. So what I, the image that I use in my mind is to keep pushing this left knee into the floor. So again, it's, it's like what I was saying in that other exercise, heel goes up, hip goes down. Same idea here. And then we also push our left knee into that yoga mat. So we keep everything working. Nothing, nothing's really relaxed right now. Even though things aren't moving, everything is working to stabilize your body while the leg works. So let's just try it on the left side. So I'm not letting my right hip sink. I'm not giving in to the left hip sink either. Pelvis is neutral, shoulders are down, left toe is pointed with strong abs, lift it up a few inches and return. Always thinking of pushing that yoga mat away with my right leg. Always checking to make sure that my pelvis is neutral, that I'm not, you know, just trying to get my leg up high and twisting out of it. You can do these exercises in front of a mirror. It's a great tool to check your alignment and make sure everything is center and that you're really isolating the leg. So you should really start to feel a burn in that upper left thigh. And you might find that at first it's difficult to keep your legs straight at all um, when you lift it in this position. So if you need to bend that knee a little bit, that's also totally okay. And it actually, it works your muscle in a, in a slightly different way. But you'll definitely get a burn from that. But the benefit, you do wanna try to build up to this straight leg position because this is something that'll help minimize bulk, which is the whole point of this particular video. Basically, when we are uh, using muscles that are elongated, if it's, if it's working while it's being stretched, it's going to produce a nice lean, long muscle. This is something you see a lot um, in ballet dancers who are extremely strong, but also very slim. Um, this is because a lot of what dancers do is flexing, is working a muscle that is already being stretched. So this is the inspiration for the workout today. Okay, so we've done our back leg series working on our hamstrings. Uh, and now let's work a little bit more on those abductors. 
So I'm going to turn towards you just so you can see. We're going to go back to that same four, uh, all fours position, but this time we're going to put our legs out to the side. So start the pointed toe. You can go to your elbows. We're going to think again of our heel going to the sky. We're just going to lift our legs a few inches, trying to target those outer thigh muscles. So we lift and lower, lift and lower. Now this might feel the most challenging off the bat, more challenging than anything we've done so far. And again, this is gonna be difficult to stabilize your pelvis. You're going to start wanting to drop towards the, towards the floor with your right hip, but really try, fight to stay upright and isolate those left outer thigh muscles. Now I'm already working hard. I can already feel my hips burning, my outer thighs burning. So we're gonna do four more here. and I'm gonna shake that out because that was already a burn for me so when we go to the other side I do think it helps to keep that same image of pushing the floor away with that supporting foot that supporting knee so let's do it from the right heel to the sky lift a few inches and lower Always check to make sure that you're using your abdominals to support your lower half of your body. And of course, keep breathing. And just like the standing series where we were working our abductors, I'm already feeling a burn in the supporting leg as well because we just worked it on the other side. So now both thighs are burning in all the right places. So we know we're doing something right. And just three more here. Keeping that leg as straight as possible. And shaking it out. <sighs> okay. Now we're gonna do something a little special uh, to target the adductors. Those are the inner thigh muscles and we haven't really specifically targeted those yet. So let's move on to that exercise. So now we're going to specifically target our adductors, our inner thigh muscles. So we're gonna lie on our sides and you can just rest your head right on your shoulder. You do wanna still think of pulling the shoulders away from your neck even though it's very close to your neck. We're gonna grab the top foot, our top leg, and if you're very flexible, you're welcome to grab your heel, but it's also perfectly fine to just bring the knee in to the side. We're actually gonna be targeting the bottom leg anyway. So what we're trying to do is use our inner thigh of our bottom leg to lift off the floor lift our left foot off the floor. So we're starting with a flexed foot and we're aiming our heel toward the sky. Now for me, this actually is quite challenging to stay on balance. Because a part of, I can feel my leg once it lifts, trying to push me back onto, onto my back. So this is a good time to engage your core and try to maintain that center. Now I'm already starting to feel that burn right along my inner thigh. And it doesn't even look like I'm doing much. I'm just raising my foot a few inches off the ground, but I can definitely feel it. Now it's even more of a challenge to point the toe of that bottom foot and raise it toward the sky. 
Again, just a few inches. And you always wanna bring it up and down with control. So think of squeezing up and squeezing down like you're moving through water. As you get tired, you're gonna have the urge to just drop your leg and pick it up and drop it again. But try to keep it engaged both on the upper movement and the down movement. And if the toe's pointed, if your foot starts to cramp, you can always revert back to that flex foot. Just two more on this side. So now we're gonna do the other side and I'm just gonna turn around so you can see what it looks like from the back because I want you to get a sense of um, the isolation that we're trying to find uh, where the body is still except for that few inches that our body that our bottom leg is moving so let's see which way do I have to turn this way so we rest our head again on our shoulders palm facing down on the right arm the left arm comes to grab that knee pull it towards the body and again, it might be a little bit of a challenge to stabilize at first, so just go slowly. And we're gonna start with that flexed foot in the right leg. Heel heading away from the ground and lowering. I'm definitely shaking a little bit on this side. It's taking a little bit of time to find that center. You might feel that too, it's totally okay. It should get easier as you go along. So again, you're moving through water. You want control on the way up and on the way down. And even though our foot is flexed, we are trying to maintain a nice straight leg to get that stretch while we work the muscle like I was talking about before. Yep, I'm already feeling that burn in my inner thigh. I always check in with my body every so often to make sure I'm using my abs, that I'm still breathing, that I'm not carrying any excess tension in my shoulders or in my neck. And now I'm gonna switch over to the pointed toe position. Always trying to lift my heel first before my toe so that the inner thigh is leading. Starting to get a little tired, but I'm gonna power through, keep working with integrity. Try not to just drop that leg. All right, just two more on this side. Okay, we can sit back up. Well, we did it. We got through all four of those muscle groups. We've targeted our, our quads, our hamstrings, our adductors, and our abductors. And I think uh, you guys have a great start for reaching those ideal thighs that we all want, nice and strong, nice and slim. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and please uh, favorite this video. and. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions for me. Thank you.